Hi, and welcome to our video for 16.2, Concentrations of Solutions. So the first thing we're going to need to do is define concentration. It's kind of tough to see here because I put the brackets a little too close together, but it's supposed to be kind of like that. And this is just an abbreviation for concentration because if I want to talk about the concentration of, let's say, hydrogen ions in some water, I put those brackets around it, and that means concentration. So sometimes I'll just write them by itself instead of writing out concentration. So the definition of concentration is the amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solution. Now the most common thing that we're going to use to describe concentration is a word called molarity. And that's what we're going to use to measure the concentration of a solution. We're going to use a couple of others, but generally, I say concentration by itself, we're going to be talking about molarity. And there's a formula for it. So molarity is equal to the moles of solute over or divided by the liters of solution. And that's the entire solution. Okay? So this volume in liters is after the solute has been added. So it's the total volume. So if we want to figure out the molarity of salt water, okay, we figure out how many, right, here's our salt water, we figure out how many moles of NaCl are in here, and then what's the volume of the entire solution after the salt has been added? It's not just of the it's not just the volume of the water before we add the salt. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. So we're going to say a solution has a volume of 2.0 liters and contains 36.0 grams glucose. If the molar mass of glucose is 180 grams per mole. What is the molarity of the solution? All right, well, the molarity is equal to the moles of glucose in this case divided by the entire solution liters of solution okay so the solution has a volume so the volume the liters is equal to 2.0 okay and then the, we have to figure out how many moles glucose well, if we have 36 grams, and we want moles, we do what you want, how many moles per gram, and that would be 180 moles, per, sorry, 180 grams per one mole, 180 grams per mole, grams cancel, and we have 36 divided by 180, we put that in our handy dandy calculator and we're going to get 0 0.2 moles or moles of glucose is equal to 0 0.2 moles so now we're ready to fill this all in equals 0 0.2 moles divided by 2.0 liters and we end up with a molarity of 0 0.1 moles per liter, right? Nothing canceled out, so we had to write moles per liter is our molarity. Okay, so this is just a straight plug and chug. We just have to remember that we're putting in the moles of our solute, not the grams of our solute. All right, so let's do another one. A solution has a volume of 200 milliliters, so the volume equals 250 ml, sorry, and contains, so our, our moles is equal to 0 0.70 moles of NaCl. What is its molarity? Well, the molarity is equal to moles solute per liters solution. I would just remember molarity is moles per liter. So, 0 0.70 moles. 
Now it's 250 ml, so we have to convert that to liters. We divide by a thousand, because there is a thousand milliliters in a liter, and we end up with 0 0.250 liters, because remember it has to be in liters. And we end up now with 0 0.70 divided by 0 0.250, so we say 0.7 divided by 0.25, and we end up with 2.8 moles per liter. Okay, so if you don't understand those, you need to see those examples again, please rewind and do so before moving on. All right, you can also calculate how many moles of a substance you have from molarity. Right? So knowing that molarity is equal to moles of solute over liters of solution. Moles of solute is equal to molarity times liter solution. Right? If it's on the bottom on one side, it goes to the top of the other and becomes molarity times liters of solution. For example, how many moles ammonium nitrate are in 335 milliliters of 0 0.425 molar ammonium nitrate? Okay, so now we're going to be solving for moles, so our moles is equal to our molarity times liters, or times our volume. So our molarity is 0 0.425, 0 0.425, right, and that's moles per liter, that's what molarity or molar means times our volume in liters. Now it's 335 milliliters, so it's 0 0.335 liters. And our liters are going to cancel and we'll end up with moles. So we got 0 0.425 times 0 0.335, which is going to equal 0 0.142 moles ammonium nitrate. Same as before, if you're not quite sure of those steps, back it up and watch it again. All right, there's some less common concentration terms that we're going to kind of need to know. We're not going to use them as much as molarity, but one of them is percent by mass and we've done percent by mass before and it's going to be the same thing for solutions the mass of the part divided by the mass of the whole times 100 percent so what is the percent mass of NaOH if 2.50 grams NaOH are added to 50.00 grams H2O well the percent mass is equal to the mass of the part divided by the mass of the whole well, in this case, the part we're interested in is how much NaOH, sodium hydroxide, 2.50 grams, divided by the mass of the whole. Now, remember, we added them together. So the whole is going to be the 50 plus the 2.50, for a total of 52.50 grams. That's our whole. So 52.50 grams times 100 percent. So we plug into our handy dandy calculator 2.50 divided by 52.50 times 100 and we end up with 4.76 percent. Now, there's no units other than percent because our grams canceled. All right, so percent by mass is the same as always was. Percent by volume is almost the same thing, right? Oh, forgot to make that little change. Percent volume is the volume of solute over the volume of solution. So it's the same thing except for the masses part. So if we're going to do one of these, what is the percent by volume of alcohol at 50 mils? of ethanol diluted with water to form a total volume of 300 milliliters. Now what's important here is whatever units for volume we use on the top, 
we use the same one on the bottom. So they just need to match. Okay, so both of these are in milliliters, so we're okay. So our percent volume is equal to volume of the solute, which is the alcohol, 50.0 ml, divided by the volume of the solution. Now here it told us the total volume is 300, so we don't have to add them up because it gave us the total. 300 ml times 100, and we plug into our handy-dandy calculator, 50 divided by 300 times 100 and we have 16.7 percent because our ml's canceled. All right, that's percent by volume. Our last type of concentration we're going to look at is parts per million. Now, parts per million is used for extremely dilute solutions, where if you did a percent by mass, it would be 0 0.000 blah, 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 really, really tiny stuff. So now we're thinking of how many parts in a million of something. That's grams of solute divided by grams of solution times a million ppm, parts per million. All right, let's say approximately 0 0.0043 grams of oxygen can be dissolved in 100 milliliters of water at 20 degrees Celsius. Express this in terms of parts per million. Now, grams of solution is important. We had milliliters of water. So actually, we have to do some remembering. Now, if you remember that the density of water is equal to one gram per milliliter, then we'll remember that 100 milliliters of water is the same as saying 100 grams of water. So the grams of our solution is going to be this 100 grams of water plus the oxygen we added, which gives us a little ridiculous number like 100.0043, which if we thought about significant figures, this is the same as this. But for now, we'll use the whole thing just for fun. So our ppm is equal to grams of solute. Now grams of solute is the oxygen that's dissolved in, so 0 0.0043 grams, divided by the gram solution, 100.0043 grams, aha, uh -huh, they cancel, times a million ppm. So, plug this all into our handy dandy calculator, and it's 0 0.0043 divided by 100.0043 times a million. One, one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, and that gives me 42.998, but to the correct number of significant figures, 43 parts per million. All right, same deal as before, rewind if you need to. Finally, the last thing we have to think about is making dilution. Sometimes you'll have a too strong a uh, too strong a concentration of something and you'll need to dilute it. So, diluting a solution reduces the number of moles of solute per liter, but the total number of moles does not change. Right? So, if we have one liter of a one molar solution of say salt water right that means in this there's one mole of salt in this one liter let's say we diluted it by adding a second liter so now instead of just the one liter the whole thing is two liters we still have one mole of salt but now we have two liters so instead of being a one molar it's now going to be one mole divided by two liters, or 0 0.5 molar, for 0 0.5 moles per liter. Now, when you're making dilutions, there's a real easy way to calculate it. All right? M1V1 equals M2V2, where M is the molarity. in moles per liter and V is the volume in liters. 
Now here, let's say you're given something in milliliters and milliliters, you don't have to convert both volumes to liters because they're going to cancel each other out anyway. Well, let's try an example. How many milliliters of a solution of 4.00 molar Ki potassium iodide are needed to prepare, to prepare 250 milliliters of 0 0.760 molar Ki? All right, so first we write a formula. M1V1 equals M2V2. M1 equals M2 equals V1 equals V2 equals. All right, so we want to make 250 milliliters of a 0 0.760 molars Ki. So 0 0.760 molars. How many milliliters? of a solution of 4.00 molars Ki are needed. So we need to solve for V1. So that's right, we divide both sides by M1. And we end up with M2 V2 over M1. So 0 0.760 molar times V2 250 ml divided by 4.00 molar 4.00 molar cancel and we're left with milliliters is that what we're looking for yes we're looking for volume all right so now we just plug into our handy dandy calculator 0 0.760 times 250 divided by 4 and we get 47.5 ml. So how many milliliters of 4 molar Ki are needed to prepare 250 milliliters of 0 0.760 molar Ki? 47.5 Five. So if we're using this, right, we would pour into our flask or beaker or whatever we're mixing with 400, sorry, 47.5 milliliters of our 4 molar solution and then fill to our 250 ml line with water.